In this video, I will explain how to start and how to create a walk animation cycle. So these uh, walk animations, they are one of the most difficult animations to accomplish, to do it right. And um, not only because it has several movements uh, related to the character, so it's not only about the legs, it's about the arms, about the body, about the head. It's all works together while we walk. It's not only because of that, it's because there are a lot of types of walk and there are no two person that walk the same. So there are a lot of things to consider while you are creating a walk cycle. So it, it can be related to the age, to the body weight, to the personality, to happiness or sadness about some character if it's injured or not, if it's a lady, if it's a man, if it's a man more female, if it's a, a female more male. So there are so many things that you can, can consider on the walk that it makes this movement very, very difficult to do it right, to accomplish it right. What I have here is uh, already a sketch that I did and I did it based on this book here, the Animator Survival Kit. And uh, you will find this on page 108 and you will have a lot of information here, very, very useful. And for this first approach, I will just make a character without arms, okay? I'm just having this, um, well, an arm, <laughs> an arm character, um, so only legs and body and body torso and head. That's the only thing that I have here. And I will explain each pose because this is very, very important. And the rules here, they are very easy to understand. They are just complex when we start to creating other types of walk. Okay, so let's, let's start. This pose that we have here, ah, and before continuing, very important too, is that to know how many frames we will have for our walk animation. So the, what you will find probably is that general people will walk on 12s uh, in a march time, so half a second per step. But well, if you, you can look for it and you can also do it like that, but it's very common to have walk animations with eight frames, okay? Because we have the key poses there and we can change all the way the character moves with these eight frames. So eight frames for our walk cycle, that's what we have here. It means that each, um, well, we can divide this walk into parts. Let's look at the right leg. So the right leg goes down and there's a cycle and then the left leg will do the same as the right leg did. So we can divide these in two parts because one leg does more or less the same thing as the other leg. So it's, it's even simpler to memorize all these poses. So which poses are these? So the first one that we have here is the contact. The contact foot is this one. The one that has a kneel on the ground, okay? This is the contact foot. This will be my contact foot for the following poses. And this foot here is still on the ground, touching the ground, but only with the tip of the foot. So the weight of the body right now is divided in these two feet, okay? This is important because the walk cycle is, it has to do a lot of um, transferring the weight back and forward, okay? So we need to go, we, we need to play with the weight and we need to communicate the, where the weight is distributed, okay? So in this case, the weight is divided by both feet. In the next pose, what you will see is that the contact foot, it was this one, will be flat on the ground. And this is essential to communicate this weight transition, okay? So the weight that was divided in two parts is now only supported by this foot. How can I communicate that? First, this foot really needs to be flat on the ground and this foot here is totally up. There's no weight, even if it can touch the ground, but the position of the foot clearly says to us, there's no weight in this foot, okay? So this is very important. As the, the body comes to this foot, 
what is happening here is that you can see that the leg bends. So the importance of this leg bending is to help to communicate that idea that I was talking before about the weight coming to this foot. So due to the weight, the foot will bend to support the weight. Okay, so this, this leg really needs to be bended here. And since this leg really needs to be bended, this means that the body, and now notice the head, where the head is, well, it comes down, right? Because we bend the leg, so the, the body all come down. And this is not the contact position anymore. And this is the moment where our character is lower. So this we can call it down position. Okay, so contact down. This is the moment where the body is lower. What is, will happen next? is that the same foot is still on the ground, okay? It continues flat, okay? It's very important, this foot to be flat. And here, this leg, the back leg, now is passing. So this leg here is passing. Um, so that's why this pose here is called passing pose. So down, passing. Here you can see that the head is coming up, but don't think about that right now, just Let's consider this. This leg is passing to the front and this leg, you can see here that it's straight, but this is not an important aspect of this pose. That's why I was talking with you here that this is important to be bent. Here it's not really important to be straight. It can be also bended, so this is not a key aspect of this pose. And the next pose, what we will see is, so this is the moment where where the body is higher, okay? So this is the highest point, okay? So the up pose is characterized by having the body higher as possible. The weight of the body is still on this leg here, as you can see, is still here, the weight, but is just about to be divided again. So as you can see, the body, it cannot stand in this pose for long. So it's just about making a transition, okay? So what will happen next is again, having the weight divided in two feet, okay? Again, this is similar to this pose, but it's in the other leg. So just let me just again put this here, the transparency. So here is similar to that one, but the opposite. And the following poses are again, the same thing as we saw before. So again, we have the same poses. So contact, right? But for the back leg, here is down, here is passing, and then is again up. So the head, it's here, the head, it's here or almost. <laughs> Uh, again, the head is here and the head is here, okay? So these are the key poses that you have to consider to make a, a walk animation. So this is the, the main structure and the main poses that you have to consider for your walk. Regarding the, the arms, well, they will be opposite of the legs. So this means that in this pose here, while the right leg is in front, the right arm comes back, okay? And another thing that we, I will now start asking you to look at is the rotation that you must feel in the body, okay? So the arms will also rotate more, even more than the hips, the shoulders will rotate, okay? So left, arm back, the shoulder goes back, right arm up goes, like something like this, okay? So we have to simulate this and also with the hips. So the hips, as you can see here, the hip, uh, it will go back, okay? So, and again, the same thing happens to the leg on the back. So see here, just let's just look at the front leg. So the, the um, this leg, the right leg here is in this, moment here is there and when it comes here is there okay so if you divide the body like this the hip is here and in this case the hip is here okay so the better we simulate these movements well the more personality the character will have 
right? So now the arms. So the arms, as I was telling you before, the arms move in opposite directions in relation to the legs. In this case, this means that if the right leg is coming forward, the left arm is also coming forward and the right leg is coming backwards. Um, if you think about the arms and legs as working in opposite direction, this means that uh, the moment where the legs are more uh, apart is the moment where the arms are more apart as here. You can see here that the arms here are wider. However, I'm not putting the wider arms in this pose. I'm putting the wider arms in the falling pose. This is related again to that delay that we talked about when we talked about the follow through and overlapping action. So uh, the arms will have a little bit of delay. Okay. So this will seem much more natural and the same thing with the hands. Okay. It's like the body goes and then goes the arm and then goes the end. Uh, that's why I have here the moment where, okay, they are uh, apart. Oops, this is also and the moment where the arms are wider is the, the frame after the legs being wider. Okay, so this is still the same arm. So don't mess up with the which is on the front and which is on the back. Here, the as you can see here, the passing, the arms are more or less aligned to the body. And then they swap. Okay, this is the back one. This is the front. And then here, so the front arm is coming forward. Okay, and now we just need to repeat for the other. Of course, that in this case, the front arm should be a bit bigger and the left arm should be a bit smaller. Okay, I'm just making a quick change. <laughs> in this case, now I will change this. This will just be removed. And in this case here, this uh, I want that hand to follow okay so instead of being backward it will be like this okay And uh, in the in the next part, I will make one with a little bit more details. But for now, let's try to make a, a simple approach as this one. 